Hello, Dental 18 listeners. This is Kira, and I am jazzed because not only do I have a legend, this is somebody I podcasted with, gosh, like two years ago, and I didn't even really know what to do on podcasting. So I'm super excited to welcome him to the Dental A team. Um, he's a great friend. I'm sure you guys have heard of him, Howard Ferran. And I'm going to enter you, but Howard, how are you today? I'm great. I, I thought, though, by now you would have changed your last name from Dent and gone all the way to Dentist. <laughs> just Kiara Dentist. You're still right? just Kiara Dent. What is it going to take for you to be Kiara Dentist? <laughs> I should. I should change that. I get asked quite a bit of... Kira, is this actually your name or is this just a stage name? And I'm like, no, really, guys. It took three fiancés to get the last name Dent. So true story. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> but um, I feel, Howard, you are somebody who needs no special introduction, but I'm going to intro you anyway because um, we have a pretty special big deal. Um, we are podcasting today, August 4th. Um, so this might be released a little bit later, but we are podcasting August 4th which is a pretty special day. So you guys know, um, Dr. Fran, he is a dentist and he is the founder and owner of dentaltown.com and Dentaltown Magazine. And he's practiced dentistry at today's dental in Phoenix metro area for more than 30 years. In 2017, Incisal Edge Magazine ranked him among the 32 most influ influential people in dentistry, which I think is very, very true. Myself, I've known about him before I even started the Dental 18. So um, Dr. Fran has lectured internationally on the business of dentistry since 1990. Do you want to put in your date, Dr. Fran? August 4th, 1990. Today's my 30-year anniversary, and I, I got this pillow. My comptroller, <laughs> Stacy made me a pillow, uh, but uh, 30 years on the road. That's insane. 30 years today. We're celebrating the 30 years, so I think that's huge. Um, your genuine passion for helping dentists provide faster, easier, high-quality, and lower-cost dentistry to their patients is what drives you um, today. In 1999, Dr. Ferran also released the Timeless Your 30-Day Dental MBA series, which is available on YouTube and iTunes. Since then, he's released massive amounts of distinguished content, including his monthly Howard Speaks column in Dental Town Magazine, the 11-part online CE course, The Virtues of Profitability Dentistry, and his world-renowned podcast series, Dentistry Uncensored with, Dr. with Howard Ferran, which has released more than 1,000 episodes and has been downloaded more than 5 million times. And as a podcaster, that is a huge feat to do. So Howard, like massive feat. Um, Dentistry Uncensored, Uncensored's guests include dental professionals from around the world, including top-tier specialists, dentists fresh out of school, CEOs of the world's largest dental companies, and experts in the marketing, finance, practice management, and more. Uh, Dr. Fran reaches hundreds of thousands of dentists from around the world every day. His ever-expanding presence across social media platforms include 300,000 Facebook followers, 25,000 Twitter followers, 35,000 LinkedIn followers, not to mention the 250,000 registered members on dentaltown.com. So uh, with that, that's a better intro than I did. Dr. Fran, it is truly an honor and a privilege to have you on the Dental A team, to chat with you, to see you, and how, how awesome is it that it's August 4th, so your true 30-year 30, 30 anniversary. Yeah, me, me and my buddy from uh, dental school, Craig Sykin, I, we just wanted to see New York City. I was born in Wichita, Kansas, went to Creighton and Omaha and dental school in Kansas City, and I'd never seen the Big Apple. So I kind of had this idea like, well, maybe I wanna, I'll want to. i go give a lecture. We'll make it a business expense, and I'll meet Dennis. But the, the whole, the whole um, deal with that was just networking. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it's one of those things where dentists are they're shy, they're introvert, uh, they, um, they, they clam up when you, when you go to a study club, they'll only get out their cases and show their mistakes and ask for help. If it's like five or six people max, but right. once you get to 10, they go to classroom style. They don't say anything. And life is just not just what you know, but who, you know, yeah. and I, I knew when I got out of school that, um, I had I knew a couple of, um, business things cause my dad owned nine franchise restaurants. And I saw that all the franchise knowledge was not being applied to dentistry so i thought well i'll go out and tell him what i know about business from my dad i wouldn't get i, I end up getting my mba like a decade later but i did it because i knew if i went there and shared what i know two things would happen they would tell me what they think is wrong for free uh, why it's not going to work and b they tell me other stuff they they didn't know so yeah. i started in 1990 and but meeting real people in the street telling me all these things, I'd say, well, write, write that up. And finally, it was 1994 where I realized I'm going to start a dental magazine because none of the dental magazines were owned by a dentist. And I would read these dental magazines, and then, but they own like 100 magazines. So they own fireman, policeman, dentist, <laughs> hygienist, teacher, you know. And, and I, I, wanted, um, I wanted a real wet glove um, magazine that real wet glove dentists were saying what worked in the mm -hmm. real world. 
Yeah. And so, so it's, it's always about sharing. And the more you uh, put out, the more you're going to receive. Absolutely. Well, and that's what I love. I mean, so you guys, the reason Dr. Ferran and I are on the podcast today is because at Voices of Dentistry in January, before the world shut down, you and I were supposed to podcast there. And I'm like, dang it, we missed it. And now we're, we're in COVID time. So here we are. But I just love your, your outreach and that you are a dentist and that you can speak to that. And so I have been super curious. I mean, you guys, it is Howard Fran. And if you listen to his podcast, you listen to anything, you know that this show is going to go. I'm not even sure. I don't even know if Howard knows where we're going today on our show. Um, I'm always, we always leave it up to chance with you. But I was curious, and what I was thinking of is because obviously the Dental A team is about teams. It's about, we have a slew of listeners coming in. And I'm just really curious of if you could go back in time and tell yourself coming straight out of school, what are some of the tips or things that you would advise yourself um, that would really help you have a, a different career path or a more successful or an easier career path that you would, you would give yourself that advice to? Well, first of all, you, you just got to believe in dentistry for one. I mean, you know, Pierre Fichard was, you know, uh, uh, 200 years ago in France and G.V. Black was 100 years ago. I, I bought the first three books he wrote autographed and signed by him. And, it, and if you read those three books 100 years ago, I mean, they, they didn't they didn't know. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, they thought they, they uh, trephinated holes into the jaw to let the evil spirits out and then they they drew them and they all look like court jesters. But the bottom line, dentistry, it comes down to is just a patient going to a dentist. And the whole mm -hmm. industry starts when that patient gives the dentist $1 and says, fix my tooth. Here's mm -hmm. a coin, fix my tooth. And that's dentistry and it's not going away because the only health is wealth. And when you have a severe toothache, you, you, you can't go to the store the next day. You can't go along with your life. I mean, you have a serious toothache and there, there's cosmetic things. Like I imagine if you lost your front tooth, how many years would it take you before Kiara replaced her front tooth? Um, I'd be there within two minutes and I would have right. a mask on. <laughs> It would take no time to get there. Oh, we, we had to close down St. Patrick's Day uh, this this year, and then we opened up Cinco de Mayo. My first patient was a 71-year-old lady whose crown fell off the day we shut down, uh, and she was 10 times more mad about that than the entire pandemic. I'm sure. I mean, I mean she was just, and, and you know, you're thinking, well, you just got to put a mask on and go to Safeway, but it, it just killed her self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I, I remember probably the, the patient who uh, adores me the most um, was um, she called me crying from her bathroom. She had the family over and she went in the bathroom to wash out her denture and she dropped it in the sink and she split it and it was a Sunday. And I said, oh. well, can you just sneak out the back door? And she goes, well, where am I going to go? I said, I'll be at the dental office before you get there. And I mm -hmm. hung up. And my four boys, I always tell my boys, uh, daddy's got, a, you know, we got an emergency. And the boys would run to the car and, and you know, one would open the front door and one got the, the chain and napkin. And I sat there and did a denture repair for her. And I mean, it took her from complete tragedy with this family thing mm -hmm. to, I mean, Every time she came in, she had to bear hug me for five minutes. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, it just saved her day. So dentistry is real. And people try to um, make all these weird things. Like, like talk about the economy. You know, they, they always believe that the economy is because of what your leader is doing or the Federal Reserve or what they're doing with interest rates. You know, the economy is because 8 billion people wake up and they want to eat breakfast. So yeah. there's a the whole breakfast economy. The, the dental economy is because 8 billion people um, have a tooth problem and they go to 2 million dentists around the world and it's not going away. But, but the, but the government tries to make us think it's all them and their interest rates, uh, dental insurance companies try to make you think it's all them and, and, you know, the government's got to do it. And, and I, I don't want to talk about politics and government and insurance or whatever. You, you just got to have faith in dentistry. And yes. I, I would, I, when, when these people don't have a job, I mean, I, I think it's actually good. I'm kind of like snickering because when <laughs> I got out of school, I graduated May 11. I had my office open September 21st. And you mm -hmm. see people just come out of school and they just walk around the dental office swimming pool, sticking their toe yep. in. And they say, well, I think I should just go get a job. And it's like, okay, great. But I know that, that you can't get two dentists to agree that today's Tuesday. Um, they're, 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 <laughs> Never, ever, they're, they're too educated. You want to have a million employees, be Walmart or the Army. Don't yep. be a law firm, a dental office, a medical op The politics at a hospital is deafening. All dentists have a friend that teaches at a dental school, and they say the politics is just insane. It's insane. Insane. Oh, it's, it's, I worked it's at Midwestern. Beyond. I worked at their dental college for three years, and I was shocked at 
one, no two dentists will ever agree on the same treatment plan. So let's just high five around that. Like it's always different. That's okay. And the politics are pretty, pretty impressive as well. So yes. Was that, was that Midwestern in Glendale? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, rule number one, if, if one instructor signs you off to start this filling <laughs> and then you get another instructor to sign off when you're done. Oh, okay. You just, you just cut the world in <laughs> half and you might as well go to Jupiter. I mean, um, so, so the thing is, you know, I, I tell these dental students, I say, um, um, what, what do you want to do? And they say, well, you know, I just want to get a job for now. And I say, okay, well, let's go back five graduating years. It's 2020. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the class of 2015 and let's see how many of them went and got a job at this big DSO that's coast to coast and love it. And we can't <laughs> find anybody. And then everybody that's five years out of school, they've had a different job every year. Mm-hmm. And they'll go work. Uh, one, 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 this guy called me the other day and then he worked for my friend for a year and he's telling me everything is wrong with it. And I'm just sitting here thinking, you will never have a dental office as good as my friend in a million years. And what you mm-hmm. need to do is have your bubble popped and go start your own practice. Totally. So, so just open it up. And if you think you're going to go bankrupt, then what? So girls, when they lose their front tooth, won't care anymore. They'll just, everyone will just walk around and say, well, I'm from Casa Grande and that's how we look down here. <laughs> um, you know, um, you know, uh, I'm from AJ where, you know, teeth is unfashionable. What you want is a Chanel number no. five and missing your six anterior teeth. Um, right. what toothaches will go away. I mean, so, you know, dentistry is a real thing. So is healthcare. And every single person so far has died. I mean, um, that when they do the DNA, they find that mitochondrial Eve for Homo sapien is about a million years ago. And we lived on the eastern edge of Africa in the mountains, you know, near Somalia for a million years. 120 billion people died. Everyone's going to die. And mm-hmm. the only wealth is health. And the more you can delay the dying, the more you can keep your teeth, is the only ultimate wealth. And yeah. these people will part with all of their coin to not die of a disease. If I went to any mother who had a kid, have you got kids yet? I don't. Nope, no kids yet. Oh, you are a genius. <laughs> Just keep it that way. Uh, I, uh, uh, if you change your mind, tell me, and I'll come over here and bonk you on the head. No, I'll it, be sure it, to ask. It, it, <laughs> Kids are, are like, you know, it's the hardest job you'll ever love. I mean, I, I love it. I, you know, I, and I've already talked to all four of my boys this morning, but, you know, it, it's a it, it's a big commitment. And so is opening up a dental office. And if you open up a dental office, um, the, the only thing that matters is your relationship between you and the patient. Mm-hmm. And, and if you can attract a team of same values and open up a dental office where you ultimately really care And you walk the talk, everything you do on the patients, you do on yourself and your staff, and you need some higher purpose. What we did when I started my team, I said, okay, we're not just going to have the business of dentistry, drill, fill, and bill, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, till I drop dead and retire in some house. Um, It's about, you know, I want to have an impact on my my community. And the first thing I noticed is that they didn't have water fluoridation. So what Mm -hmm. I did is I blocked off Friday mornings from 8 to to 2 it was, or 8 to noon. And I told my staff, we're going to fluoridate this town. It was the third largest unfluoridated city. But it was at every Friday where we were studying the research, we were talking to the city councils, we, Jack Dillenberg, the dean of the um, AT Still, was the director of dental health, and he was turning me on to his contacts at the CDC, and this was before internet, computers, any of that stuff, where you would wait for a package, and it would be a Xerox copy manual of a, of a study, and, and old journals, and, but it was, but it, I was so young and dumb, I thought this would take like three months for the city council to make a decision. End up taking every Friday for two years. And um, the Arizona State Dental Association uh, gave me the uh, Arizona Award for outstanding contribution for that that effort. Wow. But it, it, it showed the, the purpose that we're, we're serious here. This is a dental mm-hmm. office. We want mm-hmm. to lower the disease, missing filled teeth. Right? Kind of reminds me of that joke. Well, if dentists make their money from cavities and four out of five dentists recommend this toothpaste, <laughs> well, then I don't trust well, it. And what that's what's think? And that's what's the coolest thing about dentistry because I can't think of another profession that tries as hard as it can to put itself out of business. Every dentist has everything to lose from water fluoridation and 95% of them support it and work on it. Um, you know, we all have a hygiene department where if you do everything the hygienist says, I mean, go go back. I mean, I, I got two hygienists. I, I don't know when's the last time any of them needed a crown or a root canal or anything right. like that. So, so we're, 
we're trying to put ourselves out of business. It's a real deal. The patient doesn't want to die, lose body parts, teeth. So the own, so I don't I don't know what the problem is. Either you don't believe in yourself or you don't believe in dentistry. And my God, it's time to do both. It's time to believe mm-hmm. in yourself and believe mm-hmm. in dentistry because a million years from now, there's still going to be dentists. Right. You're exactly right. And I love that you brought that up because I, the reason we do the dental A team, um, to your point, I had a tragic accident um, a few years ago, which put me back in the chair at the dental office. And I thought, man, I really do love dentistry so much. And it really does change people's lives. Well, then owning my own practices and being in every single position, I started realizing, hey, there's an area for team members to really grow. Working at Midwestern, seeing all these potential doctors coming out, I just realized this is the best profession we could ever possibly be in. But yet so many doctors that I, I mean, yes, we're at Midwestern. I know a lot of dentists out there. And so many of them just say, well, Kira, I think I'm going to try like, well, just like you said, they tiptoe around. And the reality is no dentistry is an essential service. Our smiles, our teeth, like that is health. It is part of the genetic makeup of our bodies. This is part of our livelihood. This is part of our lives and people really will do a lot for it. And so I believe that thoughts create our beliefs. Um, Our beliefs create our thoughts and our thoughts create our words. Our words create our actions. That's Gandhi for you. And so what are you telling yourself day in and day out? Are you telling yourself that dentistry is going to be dying out in so many years and you believe that? Well, then that's going to become your reality. Or do you believe that this is truly the best profession and you are the best person for this job? Then therefore, I... I don't see people ask me all the time, like, Kira, what's your prediction of the future of dentistry? And I'm like, I think it's bright. I think it's strong. Like, but DSOs will take over. And I said, I don't think that that's the case. I do think that private dentistry will exist. So what are your thoughts on DSOs versus private dentistry existing in the future? What's kind of your take on that? Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, if you're an old man like me, I turn 58 <laughs> this month. I, I do. I, August 29th, well, happy I turn birthday. 58. August is a big month for you. High five on I your know. 30 years. Oh, my gosh. Wow, good luck for you. <laughs> and and um, you know they um, they, they're um, the 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 future of dentistry. I, I mean, it, like it's just it's clearly not going away. It's it's clearly the most important thing. Um, they clearly don't um believe in themselves. But when you, but your question about DSO is real simple. Is that most of the older people that are dentists are um conservative male. Um, conservative males, I'll say that. And mm-hmm. the, 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 the thing they can't stand the most is like communism, you know what I mean? You know, sure. where government <laughs> control, one world order, sure. all that kind of stuff. And But then they believe that dentistry in the business will have one world order. It'll be like one market. Well, look at housing. I mean, I can buy a mansion, a four-bedroom, a three-bedroom, a two-bedroom, sure. an apartment, a studio. I can live in a car. My, my friend um, had their truck stolen, and they just found it three days later, and the guy was living in it. So, oh, so, so the housing go, goes from, you know, uh, living in a van down by the river all right. the way to a nine bedroom house. Um, mm-hmm. l- look at cars. I mean, you could have, you know, a bicycle, a scooter, a, a, you know, all, all the way to a Lamborghini. But right. a Lamborghini is probably $300,000, but probably the number one selling car to the middle class is a $30,000 Ford Taurus. But the number one selling car in the world is a $10,000 Ford Escort. So you have all these market segments. And then people will go to dentistry. And think, oh, it's just one thing. It's only fee for service. It's only a Delta provider. It's just one thing. And when I got out of school and the kids didn't want to start their own, they joined the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Well, now they can get a job at Aspen and Heartland and all this. I don't want to hire these kids. I, I've been talked into it by some really good young dentists, and they were mm-hmm. friends with my boys in high school and all things like that. But who would want a dentist um, who's done 20 fillings in their life if I can have them, I, I, I like associate the other end where they, they already did their own practice. They were up in the cold. Mark, uh-huh. The kids are gone. And now they did their dream is to retire to a warm, sunny Phoenix. Well, how they, they've been doing dentistry for 25 years. I don't have to right. show them anything. I, they, they know what they can and can't do. Most importantly, they have that relationship. They can talk to the patient. You know, I, I'll prefer that. But I love the DSOs that they provide jobs. Um, now, when you look at the fact that there's about 6,000 graduates a year in the United States, and it takes them about five years to own their own practice, I, I, I see a 30,000 max. I mean, mm-hmm, you can't mm-hmm. open up 
um, Walgreens coast to coast unless you got 50,000 pharmacists you can hire. Well, the sure. whole pool of dentists that you can hire is only 30 grand. And I see zero evidence of people getting a job uh, for, for any other dentist and saying, man, I really like taking orders from another person. I, I want to be under your thumb. Will you tell me <laughs> everything I'm, no, that, I mean, it's just not the way humans are. It's not the way animals are. Animal, right. I mean, you let a woodpecker go. The first thing he does is tries to make a hole to crawl into to protect himself from everything else. Every animal's in a cave. Every animal's in a house. Like, like when people say that um, Americans aren't trusting Name one animal in the animal kingdom that's trusting. Who sure. goes skipping through the jungle saying, oh, <laughs> look at that cute little puma over there. I'll pet him while I eat this strange red berry. The whole animal kingdom is stressed mm -hmm. out. The whole animal kingdom doesn't want to be engaged. The whole animal kingdom wants to stay home. And you want to work for yourself. And um, my gosh, um, so it's a market segment. And to say that DSOs will take over all of dentistry could only be said to by someone who just is, isn't even in, into dentistry. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. um, and, and, but, but I think they got good things that they can teach us a lot. They're better totally. at location. They're the best at answering their phones. You call any DSO that's a name brand at two o'clock in the morning yep. and a human being answers the phone yep. and starts working the deal. And then you call every dentist in America from Thursday at five <laughs> to Monday at eight. And I'm happen. sorry, the mailbox is full. <laughs> The mailbox <laughs> is full, and they have unlisted phone numbers, you know. So there's, I mean, um, Bob Fontana of Aspen set up a call center here, and I podcasted him, went to that call center. I mean, they, they won't even hire people that have dental experience because it, it's so hard to get their bad habits taken away. It's like golfing. Interesting. The first uh -huh. time my dad said I'd go golf with him, I was like 10. I was like, so excited to get a golf with dad. Then I almost cried because um, he dropped me off at the, um, the, the lessons guy. And he said I had to have 10 lessons before I wow. swung with him because he didn't want me to get this bad hook and slice that he has. And he said he spent 20 years trying to get rid of his bad habit, and he wanted Howie to start fresh, you know, and, and do mm -hmm. it right. And so, so the, you know, the, the bottom line is, um, my, my gosh, we have so much to learn from these DSOs. I mean, let's say you get out of school and you go work for um, Bob Fontana in, in Aspen in Phoenix. And I'll meet mm -hmm. them. I'll say, oh, my God, have you been to their call center? No. So so you just want to have lunch and complain about Aspen <laughs> and wish you had your own deal. And, and, mm -hmm. and Bob's not even a dentist, and he has 800 locations and a call center that looks like you're in Star Wars. You're, yeah. I mean, uh, and, and then there's other dentists who said, oh, yeah, I went and worked for Heartland. And then I met so, someone like you, someone, someone in senior management that's just crushing it and was able to convince her to leave the operation and come to their startup. So she's already at the level of a thousand yeah. locations, but why is she leaving? You know why? Because staff turnover is, is a problem sure. everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. you just can't, I mean, it's a problem with kids. It's a problem with your marriage. It's a problem. I mean, who, who's getting married? You, you even said you joked that you had three fiancés. I did. You found one. Okay. So you have a fiance turnover <laughs> problem, you know, um, humans are complex and, and what you need to do, the most important thing. I love what you're doing with the dental A team because it's all your team. It's, mm -hmm. it's attracting like-minded people. And okay. as soon as you get your core base, um, you're, you're not going to be a millionaire until you have a, a dozen people that have been with you five to 10 years. Mm -hmm, and everybody mm -hmm. I know that's, that collects a million dollars a year and they're taking home 250 to 350. Um, they're, they're old and they're re, uh, you know, they got a receptionist assistant, a hygienist that's been with them 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. person that's struggling, it's, it's always someone new. And, and that's the biggest problem with DSOs because in Phoenix, they come in, they say, yeah, I went to this place. It's really, really great. And they said I had four fillings. So I went back in there and that doctor is no longer there. Totally. And then they gave me another guy. And then mm -hmm. I was going through that. Then I went back and now he's not there. Yep. And, and then they start wondering, why does nobody stay there? Now there's good stories. I lost my uncle to Aspen. And, and I think, no, it, it was great because they have a denture repair service. And when my mm -hmm. uncle goes to me, I have to send it to a lab. He's, sure. he's without his, his um, um, teeth from eight to five. Mm -hmm. He goes into Aspen and just takes the newspaper with him. Yes, they still sell newspapers. I, that might be shocking <laughs> to some of your shocking listeners. Death. <laughs> and he, he just sits, sits there in the waiting room for an hour and they got the lab and, and Aspen does a better job. They have a better call center than I do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, but so um, it's more, so the answer is 
It's market segmentation. And if you look at all healthy economies, all healthy markets, look look at cars. How many Mm -hmm. major car companies are there? A dozen. I mean, there's a dozen car companies and Mm -hmm. dentists think that everybody should just practice like Ralph does (laughs) because Ralph is Mr. Dentistry. And then another thing you got to tell dentists that they don't believe, but when dentists die, it's not going to make the newspapers. I mean, dentistry has sure. been going for two centuries, and it's going to go for another two centuries mm-hmm, with or without mm-hmm. any dentist, with or without anybody's opinion. This is a human body part. It's rock solid. It's not going away. Mm-hmm. No, you're exactly right. And what I love that you said is it's helping people to see the trends um, and also to learn from the, I mean, DSOs, I always say, you guys, DSOs have incredible systems. They have incredible systems. They have that figured out to where somebody without dentistry can come in, can learn it to train. And so for those associate doctors who are at a DSO and they're wanting to to start their own practice, I suggest, and I'm curious on your take, I always suggest that they learn the systems from the DSOs. But I love that your, your stance is look at the market, look at where we're going. It's not going to go away. Dentistry, like we talked about at the very beginning of this, is dentistry is here for the long haul. We're here for the long haul. And if you really are good at what you do, you're good at your craft, that you're not going to have an issue. And I, I truly, I don't believe that DSOs will take over the entire world because I think well, there isn't a car company, like you said, that's taken over the entire industry. There will always be different people that want different types of services. They're not going to run everybody out of business. And I really do believe there's a place for all of them to swim in the pool. There's a lot of people out there that need dentistry. There's a lot of dentists coming out of school. Um, I think let's learn from each other and then just go for what what works best for you. But I do agree to the, the heavy turnover in a lot of those DSOs. That's something that a lot of private practices oftentimes have a have an advantage over is having that long-term team so spinning to team you've been in dentistry you've talked to a lot of dentists what are some of the like we have a lot of team members that listen the whole idea of dental a team was to build a podcast i mean doctors have ce all over the place they have ways to become better they're always sharing tips and i thought shoot if i really wanted to grow a phenomenal practice I need my team members to also be growing and educating with me. I need them to be leveling themselves up. I need them to be investing in themselves. I need them to be doing personal development as well. So what are some of the things you see that team members could implement right now that would make them, we're going to just use our name, a team team members. What are, what are some of the, the attributes across every person you've ever met? You, you have so much experience, Howard, that you just, I feel you're a wealth of knowledge. So what would you say to team members listening or offices listening that want to enhance their team, what are some of those key pieces that you really look for when you're looking at it? First of all, I want you to know that all these adorable compliments you're giving me just means I'm really, really old. So when you're saying I have all this experience, (laughs) I'm just, you know, if if you've been in dentistry 32 years and you didn't pick something up along the way. But I would would say, uh, you know, let's just start from the beginning. Um, You know, on Dental Town, when you start the first, when you start a thread, you can make it a poll. So you always hear Mm -hmm. people saying, oh, well, half the dentists think that. And I say, wow, that's interesting. Will you show me the poll? Oh, I just, that. I just pulled that out of my rear. <laughs> I, I, I just believe it. And and so polling dentists since 1998, um, if you ask them what's the most stressful thing, it's never what bonding agent, it's never what, mm-hmm. it's people. And it's either the yep. patient or the staff. So, so a lot of that is because the dentist, I mean, to get A's in calculus and applied calculus is physics and applied physics is chemistry and applied chemistry is biology and applied biology is dentistry. It's someone who lived in a library for eight years Mm-hmm. And they're not mispersonality like you. They, they're, you know, they're shy. They're introvert. It just is yeah. what it is. I, I mean, um, you know, the, the my, my, my homies uh, are more of a scientist than they are an Instagram influencer. One hundred percent. And, and and so then the other problem is they've always been told they're the smartest person in the class. They've always got all the A's and they're always so smart. So then they get that that syndrome that, well, I'm just not a doctor of dentistry. I'm a doctor of everything. Thus, I know everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so then I'll go in there and you got you got to wake up to this dentist says, just because you know the difference between a derivative and an integral, okay, just because you know how to figure <laughs> the volume of a sphere doesn't mean that you know how to hire staff. And yeah. so when I go into an office, say, okay, buddy, you've had this office for 10 years years and the longest anyone's ever stayed here is two who's hiring these people and he's like well i am because i'm the smartest person (laughs) in the room and i got an a in physics and i'll say okay well the evidence is that you're horrible at this job so i need some humility i i I need some humbleness i mean um and, and the problem with humans is that 
if they can't see it, they'll believe it. So when, when, when I mean, everybody remembers the first time they tried to dunk the ball because you saw the, you know, you saw Dr. J doing it. Well, I can do it at Dr. J and then you do it. And, you, and indeed I cannot dunk a ball <laughs> like Dr. J. And then you see Tiger Woods, you're like, well, I can do that. Anybody can do that. Indeed. I can't do that. So if mm-hmm. they, you know, it, that's why they hate math. They hate right. math because you either got it right or wrong. Where What do they love? They love the things they can't see or measure. Philosophy, politics, religion, where you just, if you believe it, we're all good. You know, they, right. so, so when you have to show them, look, you're not good at this and you're not happy and you hate mm-hmm. your hygienist. And, and you know, so, but so you hired. One, yeah. So, so number one, if it, you know, in the dental office, sometimes the doctor is the best person in HR. Sometimes it's the doctor's wife. Sometimes it's your hygienist. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. your assistant. Um, so, so if you're not good at it and the results are clear, let's take HR seriously. So I'm in Arizona, um, which is the state with the best football team in the history of the NFL, the Arizona Cardinals. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and Bidwell, um, I don't know if I can say it for hip or anything, but he was a patient of mine and just a great gentleman, but he didn't go pick the players. He had scouts. And that mm-hmm. the scouts were, you know, they, they broke up into quarterback and running back and all these colleges. But they, they knew every single person that played in college that even might possibly be an NFL person. So they take HR very seriously. And so the dentist has turnover. He's not happy. The staff isn't happy, but he's still in charge. So I would say, let's get someone in charge. And, and the first thing you have to do is, I mean, I mean it's, it's really, it's just like marriage. Marriage. I mean, mm-hmm. you're either on board or you're not. If you hate yeah. me and you're sleeping with the neighbor and you don't come home three nights a week, I mean, what what do you need before you say, you know, this isn't working? And, you know, right. my, my joke is like, what, what does your hygienist have to do to get fired? Does she have to park her car <laughs> through the wall into the waiting room and just pull up, crash through the front door and get out and say, where's, you know, I mean, I mean, the, yeah. the amount of dysfunction. And then when it is functional, it doesn't mean it right. It means it works like, like, like you may like country music and I love music more than anything, but that's, I don't want to listen to country music. <laughs> um, you know, my, my oldest boy, Eric's always trying to make me listen to George, uh, Garth Brooks and George Strait and they're fantastic, but they're not the Rolling Stones. I mean, come on. That's a if good, that's Garth a very good Brooke comparison. Is Mick Jagger, but I don't want to work with a bunch of people playing Garth Brooks all day mm-hmm. and, and have the whole, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a Mick Jagger Rolling Stones guy. I'm a third eye blind guy. I'm, I'm not, you know, so it's preference and you go into dental mm-hmm. office where, where everybody's getting along well and you'll find out oh they're all christian they all love golf i mean they all love bowling and they're all in a bowling league and all the girls are in a a softball league and they they just Mm -hmm. get along it does you know maybe you don't want to play softball maybe you don't want to go bowling maybe but but so you you just need to find people that want to run 20 red lights on the way to work because they can't wait to tell sheila what happened last night at the bowling alley you know, mm-hmm, versus, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I'm pulling up and there's that crazy assistant getting out of the car. Oh, my God, I hate that woman. And and, and, and you can just cut the stress with a knife. And I, I just don't know why, why it has to go on. So I, I would say, Doc, you're an introvert scientist. You, anybody who loves physics, there's something not right in their head. <laughs> and it probably can be traced back um, and proven in a human interaction. And uh, so... Find the best scouts. Find the best. By, by the way, all of our greatest employees uh, that we found was from our supply people. Uh, they would mm-hmm. say, well, you know, the best assist in the world is so miserable because her team's yeah. not going for it. They're not trying. They tolerate failure. Mm-hmm. They, they don't. They don't. And, and then you interview them and you say, well, what's wrong with the practice that you're at? And they tell you and you can just tell that they want to win the Super Bowl. And they're not going to do it at this doctor's office. And, you know, Mm -hmm. and when you get a team like that, and and by the way, it's, it's never perfect. Every, every day you start new, look look at the Patriots. I mean, when I was little, Dallas was America's team. Now I think simple math would say it was the, it's the Patriots. Well, Mm -hmm. now Tom Brady's gone, this and that, this and that. I mean, HR, you know, Lori um, is in charge of our HR for, you know, 20, Two, 23 years, whatever. But it, 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 it's funny because it, it never ends and it never mm-hmm. will end. I mean, if you're 100 years old, well, your hygienist might quit. She might get ran over by a car. She might get married. Sure. Le- le- you know, so HR in sports is exactly like it is a business. And it all comes down to one thing. Does your team 
get along. And some low-hanging fruit is um, um, some people are confused because let's say Kiara works uh, five days a week and four days a week. She's all happy and bubbly and all there. And then that one day a week, man, she's got different eyes. She's upset. She's pissed off at the world. And, you know, and th- those are moody people. And you, mm-hmm. you can say, Kara, I love you nine times. But then one time say, Kara, indeed, I don't love you. And I think you're just a little bitch. And mm-hmm. that's all that you remember for the next year, two years, sure. five years, 10 years. And so you, you don't want moody people. You want people that are always the same. You want people. And I, I used to tell them, look, there's 168 hours in a week. Your ass is mine 32 hours a week, okay? If you're if, if you're all mad and want to talk about politics, religion, sex, violence, your ex-husband, whatever the hell, you got 130 hours a week to do that. <laughs> but 32 hours a week, you're in here. You know who we're going to talk about? The patient. You're not going to go to the room and tell them what you did on the weekend. You're going to go in there and ask them what they did on the weekend. When it's Christmas time, I don't, I don't want you to tell anybody what you want for Christmas because I don't care what you want for Christmas. We mm-hmm. got Sheila coming in at 8 o'clock. And let's make it special for her. It's all about the patient. Now, it's not the customers come first. You started, I've called 911 three times on a patient in the deal. And one, one was like an 80-year-old lady who wouldn't leave until I gave her uh, Vicodin. And I, I don't even know where this even came from. But she wow. she, she knew she could come in there and and, mm-hmm, and yell mm-hmm. out enough that I'd write her a script or something because she was in serious pain but didn't want an exam, didn't want me to look <laughs> at it. She was going to come back, you know, whatever the Clearly hell. Clearly serious. But, but, Serious. Yeah. yeah, but the the bottom line is, um, you, you come in and you dismember my staff and and get her all shook up and upset her. Well, that's going to rub off on the next ten patients. Mm-hmm. I walked up there one time. I think I was only open two or three years, and some guy was verbally abusing and screaming at my receptionist. I didn't even say a word. I just looked at him, picked up the phone, dialed nine one one, and then he was like. Like, what the hell? Oh, screw it. I'll just leave. When the police got there, he said, well, he's gone. You want me to leave? I said, no, I, I want you to get him, disturbing the peace. And mm-hmm. so my, 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 my team comes first, not mm-hmm. my patients. And if they're all happy, like, I mean, I really enjoy seeing, spending time, talking to uh, the team. And if you don't feel that way, um, you, you got the wrong team and you got to mm-hmm. share the same values that, you know, dentistry is job one in our, our career. So if you get the team right, like, like dentists are saying on Dental Town, they're saying, well, my hygienist says that uh, she wants me to uh, give her proof that this mask is good enough for that. It's like, <laughs> really? Well, she has a four year degree in a hospital. She's a nurse. And mm-hmm. she, you give her a $40 an hour and she t- shows you the hoops you're supposed to jump through. Well, I got a better idea. Why don't I fire your ass and spend that time <laughs> educating you on getting a new HR? It's like a quarterback. You got a quarterback mm-hmm. and every time he throws the ball, it's intercepted and ran in for a touchdown. Sure. So what are you going to yeah. do? You're going to go down there and take him to a quarterback finishing school at Spear or Coyce or Ross Nash or Panky mm-hmm. or Dawson? I think it'd be a hell of a lot easier just to fire them and find someone that can do it. I mean, I mean, this is this is a problematic pandemic causing a lot of pandemonium, and mm, you're just going to sit there with your arms crossed, waiting for me to to figure everything out because I pay you money on the first and the fifteenth. No, I, I pay you forty dollars an hour, hygienist. So mm-hmm. show show me the value. I pay you twenty dollars an hour, a dental assistant. Show me the value. But I was not born to create jobs for my staff, and then I was not born to fix all the teeth from the people. It, it's kind of like the the people. Um, uh, like take take Noam Chomsky, um, the the great mm-hmm. linguist mm-hmm. philosopher, yeah. great great guy. You know, he's an amazing linguist. And then mm-hmm. he got into history, and I, I don't think anybody has worked as hard and long. He's right here in Tucson. Just love listening to his rants on everything the government has done wrong in the history of time sure. and all their abuses and all that kind of stuff. Um, but he um, never says anything about the worker. Oh, yeah, the worker. It, it, it's kind of like, Noam, have you ever wondered, this is the only system they used for 5,000 years? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, of Iraq when they thought, well, if we get rid of that bad guy, Saddam, then all the peaceful angels sure. are going to fly out and live happily ever after. And indeed, there was a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, that were not angels. And so you mm-hmm. kind of look at the government 
kind of has to have about the same amount of energy level to counteract the energy level of its people, you know, sure. to, to make a, some kind of harmony deal. So um, the, 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 the HOA, the management team from the Roman Empire to the United States, China, Russia, whatever, yeah, they, they did a lot of things right. They went to the moon, launched satellites, invented radio, internet, all that stuff, but they did a lot of bad things. But the mm-hmm. worker, mm-hmm. He, he's no angel either. So, so sure. it's it's always about a yin yang. It's always about finding a balance. And, and they they asked Noam the other day. They said, "Well, what where where is the right gone too wrong?" And he lists all these examples. And they said, "Where is the left gone too extreme and too wrong?" Couldn't think of one. And it's the same thing with the, the government's all bad. The people, oh, they're perfect. Well, the people ain't perfect. And and if right. the right can go too far right and the left can't, I no longer trust your your thinking so it's about yin yang it's about harmony mm-hmm. it's about balance and um, the same same thing with the patient you know i'm held to the standard by the arizona state board of dental examiners to do dentistry this good mm-hmm. on billy bob who hasn't flossed his teeth one time in 48 right. years and comes in and he's got a pack of marlboro red and he says they sit there and says you want me to spit out my chew oh no i'll just work around it so don't, so don't mind know, that <laughs> Yeah, so the, the patients aren't perfect, and, and I, I tell dentists, don't ever care more about their teeth than they do, and I'll give you a, a real-world example. Um, you know, I, I got a guy scheduled for 30 minutes to do an MOD um, mm-hmm. composite on three. He shows up yeah. 10 minutes late. As soon as he sits down, you know what his first thing out of his mouth is? Oh, I gotta dude. Use the bathroom. You got a bathroom? Yep. Sure, knock yourself <laughs> out. Time. Let Every me time. numb you up. Let me numb you up so, you know, at least he'll be soaking in. Numb, he gets back. You do your MOD amount. You do your MOD filling. And you're, you, it's, it's, you got the contact, you got the decay, you did, but the, 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 you go to floss and it, it's a light contact and it's like, man, now if it was on you, absolutely redo. But am mm-hmm. I, but I, I'm out of time. And a lot of that's because of you and you don't mm-hmm. care about your teeth. And, and, you know, I diagnosed this three years ago and you're late and this, uh, so, so it's, it's good enough for you. So a mm-hmm. lot of dentists are like, oh, no, that, that's dangerous. Well, they're extremists. You know, you, you start caring more about their teeth than you do. I'll give you an example of an insurance. So, so they have an insurance that's, that's mm-hmm. a, a PPO or Medicaid. And mm-hmm. they say, well, they only give me $100 for a filling. Well, they sure. do an amalgam. Amalgam mm-hmm. lasts 38 years. It's the best of restoration. Well, I don't want to do amalgam that costs me a dollar. I want to do a poster composite for $110. Well, it, well he, he's not going to give you any extra money. He doesn't yeah. care. Um, I, I, I counsel this on, on the Indian reservations. They, they have a tremendous cancellation no-show rate. Half the people coming in for free dentistry don't mm-hmm. even show up for free. It's mm-hmm. like, well, why don't you just tell them that if you miss your appointment for your free dentistry, it'll cost you a $20 bill out of an ATM machine, non-refundable, to make the next appointment. And they're like, well, we can't do that. Oh, because you care more about their teeth than they right. do. Right. And, you know, so, I mean. <laughs> well, I, I think that that just like, I love the point of, you know, I think tying that to teams, don't care more about it than your teams do. I love what you said about that harmony and that synergy. And I also love that you are a dentist. I'm not a dentist. So I'm not going to speak to the dentist of how it feels. But I love that you said, like, recognize docs, what you do really, really well and what you don't do well and be okay to let that go. I think so many times doctors want to be perfect and as leaders, you want to have all the answers. And sometimes the answer is that you aren't the best or you don't have the answer and have somebody who's really, really good at it do that instead. Um, I really also loved your point of don't care more about your, your patient's health than they do. I think we can educate, but at some point it also becomes an entitlement that we actually breed within our patients and within our team members because we care more about it. We want them to care so much that we allow an entitlement attitude to come through rampant. And I, I love that you've been able to very poignantly tie it back to, hey, guys, like, let's look at ourselves. Docs, like, what are we really, really good at? Team members, what are we really, really good at? And let's all like go into our zone of excellence. Make sure we're bringing that to the table. Um, and I love that you said a team that's happy that as dentistry is number one. And I loved also they said, docs, your team is number one, not your patients. Because I think when doctors can get that mentality, you have a team that will rally around you. They will go to bat for you. They will make the patient experience amazing because they know you have your back. As a team member myself, knowing my doctor had my back was one of the greatest compliments they could ever give me because I knew that they cared about me more than they cared 
about what I was bringing to the practice. I was a person, not just a paycheck going through there to, to pay their bills. So I love that you've said that. Um, and with that, I would say, are there any other tips or nuggets for doctors or teams that you'd want to end on? You've given so many, I feel like we, I love, I love your podcast. I love podcasting with you because you will go on so many different avenues. I've been like writing down, you know, um, only wealth is in health. So going back to why dentistry is great, the DSO mentality versus the private practice mentality and what, what would we want to live in and looking at the spectrums of cars and the animal kingdom and just those different analogies that you were pulling through. And then, so then to the yin and the yang of team members and doctors and making sure your team is, is harmonious in order to, to really execute the best experience for you in a job, for your team in a job, and also for your patients coming in. Howard, those were like such good nuggets that I was just pulling through, like writing quickly over here. Um, any other ones that you'd want to want to leave as we wrap up? Because you really did so many great points well, today, and I appreciate we it. We talked about the different market segments and cars and houses and food. Like, I, mm-hmm. I can go get two tacos at Taco Bell for $1, but Mikhail's will charge me 7 for two tacos, you know? Right. So it's all these market segments. And it's the same with the patients. Um, you know, a lot of people are upset because – one of the things about, you know, uh, uh, an authoritarian government, everybody's going to do what they're told. In a democracy like America, you're, you're finding out that half the people don't believe in masks, okay? Mm-hmm. That, that's a classic example. It Well, it just is what it is. They don't believe in masks. What are you going to do? Are you going to, yeah. are you now going to use that as an excuse to go arrest them and kidnap them and put them in a cage? Well, I, I think that's all worse than, than the behavior. And, sure. and it's the same thing in dentistry. Um. I think half of America just wants to buy dentistry on price. Most of those people are going to go to the cheapest, fastest place on their insurance. And yep. uh, most of those people um, don't believe in the coronavirus. I mean, I, 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 mean I, I cannot tell you how many adorable neighbors and friends I have that all think it's a hoax. In fact, my first call this morning was from a dentist in, in Maine just telling me how the whole thing was a hoax. It's a one world government deal. It, it just is what it is. And that's okay. Sure. And, and um, my, my gosh, um, but, but, but the first 32 years to really, instead of being a commodity where people buy the cheapest, you know, you go to gas. I mean, if, if the gas station on the other side of the streets and nickel less, they'll go over there. They don't know if the gas from Russia, Alaska, right, Saudi Arabia, right. or fracking in Texas. It's a commodity that only trades on price. And dentistry is a commodity that only trades on price for about half of the country. The other mm-hmm. half it used to be cosmetics, and I want to go get my fellowship in the AACD or mm-hmm. something like that. Well, now I think this pandemic, for, for now, for the next year, um, the number one um, market differentiation is disease control. So I would say that since half your patients don't even believe in it, care, or want to wear a mask or whatever, you can really go about normal business for half your practice. But when they, but the, it's the older people that this, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the first time SARS came through America was 2012, and it killed 30 million souls, and okay. nobody cared about it because it was all pigs. But sure. and, and on the pigs, it was it was the babies. Well, this mm-hmm. one isn't the babies, it's the older people. Well, those are the ones that need all the dentistry. So when they yeah. call your office and say, Kara, I'm, uh, you know, it, th- there's a big flare up in Arizona. I think I'm just going to stay home. Say, well, here's the deal. You know, your, your treatment plan is twenty two fifty. If you give me your credit card and we take that twenty two fifty, we will schedule you a time where you are coming here and you'll be the only one here. So, you know, it'll be Smart. the last one of the day, maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. And the mm-hmm. only person that's going to be here is you, me, and my assistant. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And so it's about, um, it's not so much reality as it is perception equals reality. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. um, you know, anything you can do with the air filters, the mass, the temperature. I don't recommend taking the temperature on the forehead. I do think it erases is your memory because I went into the grocery store and they took my temperature and I went in for macaroni and cheese and came out with two cases of beer. I mean, I, hey, I don't know how. Hey. It yeah. might be good. They don't know that they're at the dental office. They think they're at the spa. So like, keep it up guys. Just keep it up. We're going to erase their memories. You obviously had a, that's a testimonial for what happened at the grocery store. I think we can use so, it. So, so make them make, the older people are the ones that need replaying curatage implants. They, they, they need all the mm-hmm. work. You know, a 30-year-old kid needs one filling, but a 60-year-old grandpa needs a whole bunch of work, and they, they're the ones getting kicked the hardest by this disease. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. if you're over 80, over 70, over... I, I think, right. God, I'm only going to turn 58 this month because it's over 60 when it starts to get you, and I see you're these fine. coronavirus coming around saying, he's 
He's not 60. He's we'll come back in two years. And then exactly. they fly away. And, uh, <laughs> so so um, get disease control down. And, and remember that you have two sets of, of patients. You got half mm-hmm. of your patients calling you. Just They don't, they don't even they don't want to hear anything about coronavirus. They think it's stupid. But if they're older or if they got many years of education, now the deal is you got to make them feel safe. And yep. anything you can do to make them perceive that, oh, this office looks very different than before the the, the invite. That, that's all they got to see. If they mm-hmm, if they mm-hmm. came to you for thirty two years, um, Dawn just sent me my office manager just sent me pictures today of the waiting room. She even changed out the waiting room furniture because cloth isn't as easy to sanitize as uh, leather, and mm-hmm, so she, mm-hmm. she switched them out. But all these little changes make all the scared people realize, oh, they're taking it serious. And that's why we're not going to get shut down because the reason Arizona just shut down uh, the bars is because the bars, the people that work in bars, they're not taking it as serious as the people taking right. dentistry. I mean, come on. If, right. if, if you if you think your local bar and gym and restaurant is as serious as a dental office, you got to make sure your dental office is as serious as the hospital. Right, and, exactly. And once they get that, they're, 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 we're, we're going to stay open and we're not going to shut down mm-hmm. and this too shall pass and right. it always passes and every century is better than the last century and the only reason America is getting kicked so bad on this is it's our first rodeo with it. Um, well, you know, I've lectured in all those Asian countries and I remember when SARS was a big deal out there and that was 2012 and this is 2020. Eight years they've been thinking about this mm-hmm. guy coming back and then every time that Ebola would break out in Africa, not one American cared because they said, well, it's not over here. It's in Africa. And right. Africa and Asia, 75% of the population, it's on the other side of the world over there. So this mm-hmm. is the first time in mo- in a century where that disease is over there, made it over here, might have had something mm-hmm. to do with 27,000 international flights every day <laughs> and, and packages. Maybe. Maybe. So so, so um, this one is, was a real bad one. I mean, 150,000 dead. It's not going to be over for a year. But. Mm-hmm. But going forward, um, just like the AIDS pandemic um, made us wear gloves, get rid of the uh, cuspidor, you know, get um, rid of the water mm-hmm. line from mm-hmm. the street to a bottle in the room. So all these things are upping our game. And what doesn't right. kill us makes us stronger. And the next pandemic that comes around, who knows, it'll be 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. Another one will be back. Of and course. we'll be more ready for it than ever before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think my my takeaway from that that I love that you just pointed out is when people are zigging, you should zag. So for you thinking of, hey, here's your population of your patients. When these older patients are calling you, have them come in at a later time. I don't think a lot of offices are thinking that way. I don't think a lot of dentists are thinking that way. I love that you just gave a perspective that's completely different than what I think a lot of people are looking at. And that's what I, I try to coach a lot of offices on is, think differently. Think of how this problem is actually a solution for you in a different way. I love that you brought up the point of, yes, this is just upping our game, guys. It's just making us better. This is the new norm. It's not going away. So just get used to it. Like it might change a little bit, but just up your game. And then when people are zigging, look how you can zag to be a leading edge office, to be somebody who's innovating and creating. And don't, I I really struggle when people sit here with all these problems. Like, oh my gosh, our world is falling apart. And I'm like, yes, it is to a point. But that's also, again, perception versus reality. You get to create that with your perception. And so change that if it's not an empowering one for now. So with that, I I just appreciate you. Um, Howard, I appreciate your what you've done for dentistry. I appreciate the influence you've had on my life. I appreciate you taking time today to talk to us, to talk to the dental A team. Um, it's, I was, I was sitting here. I'm like, I'm, I'm semi fangirling. I didn't know what fangirling was. Um, but I love that you just are, you're easy to talk to. You've got a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. And I love that you bring that to the table every single time. So thank you. Thank you for what you've done for my life and also for, for dentistry as a profession. Well, same back at you, and thank you for coming on my show a couple of years ago. And everything yes. you're doing, dentistry needs so many people like you to keep it going. So uh, just have faith in yourself. Have faith in dentistry. Um, my God, if, if you don't have faith in yourself, I do. If you don't have faith in dentistry, I do. You're going to be fine. Just uh, take a deep breath and, uh, and rise to the challenge. Ah, such good words, such words. And Howard, if people haven't heard about you, um, hopefully we can give more exposure on the Dental A team. How do people connect with you and and become a part of what you've got going on? 
just download the Dental Town app because what um, you know we we were um, you know we got a quarter million people there. We, we were five years before Facebook, and the, the mm-hmm. thing the thing that I fear about Facebook is it it's um, it balkanates and like like if you believe in uh, anti fluoridation, someone comes on and says they're pro fluoridation, you delete them. If you believe in an algorithm. <laughs> And you go to a cosmetic group, they'll delete you. So it just so no one pops your bubble. And the thing about Dental Town is you you can't delete other people's deal. You you can't unfriend them. And you might mm-hmm. say my composites last twice as long as your amalgams, and then twenty people can show you all the published research that indeed amalgams do last longer than composites. It's not right or wrong, but we're not going to sit here and let you live in a bubble. That, you know, mm-hmm. so, so, you know, if, if you're just following and unfriending, uh, l- like my mom, my, my two older sisters are nuns. Guess what percent of my mom's Facebook friends go to the same exact Catholic church as she does? Probably the bulk of them would be my They guess. wouldn't even let a Lutheran in that group, okay? <laughs> I mean, not, and you'd, you'd have to be a church historian to even know the difference. So, so the bottom line is I love, and then the other thing is, is social media is, is just last in, first out. It's just rolling for the day. Mm-hmm, but but mm-hmm. Dental Town on a message board, every all six million posts are indexed. So if you just broke in a, a file in MB2, all you got to do is put MB2, and you'll pull up every thread that shows cool. how to remove a bro. So it's all indexed, and um, um, it's just a, a great treasure of um of uh six million posts that you know you're gonna have to think about in whatever model that you believe so you believe all Mm -hmm. these things okay believe all these things but here's a quarter of a million dentists who might think maybe you should also think about this because this Mm -hmm. is gonna you're gonna run into this someday no matter how deep your bubble is no matter how far you fell down the rabbit hole you're gonna run into some realities and uh, so, mm-hmm. so just learn from the elder, learn from the old people. Don't learn, I mean, you know, no, no sense learning everything the hard way. Oh, that's so good. And that made me think of one of my favorite quotes. It says success leaves clues. So follow it. You can either choose to just take the, you know, the hard road, or you can take the easy road from people. If you're just willing to, to research, to look for that and to go to places that have trusted information. I love that you said it brings up controversial topics because I believe that when you can shake someone's belief system, you can shake their thoughts and you can completely shake their, their destiny. So if I'm in one world that thinks that only PPO insurance is the way to do it, but then you can shake my belief and change it to help me see that fee for service or Medicaid or all these different things that maybe I had never thought of that could ultimately change the destiny that I I end up to. So you guys go get on dental town. That's a a good one. Did you have something else? One last thing. You know what's a lot yes. better than Dental Town, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest? Do tell. Combined? Walk what? across the street and shake the dentist's hand. Every time I'm in a small town, I say, who, who, if you could be one other practice, who would it be in this town? They go, oh, the Jimbo over there, man. He's crushing it. Mm-hmm. Really, when's the last time you had dinner with him? I've never even met him. I saw him at a study. Dude. Invite them over yeah. to your house. You know, when I opened up Awatsuki, I invited every physician, dentist, chiropractor, every healthcare, anybody in healthcare in Awatsuki, I invited them to my house. 100% of the chiropractors come over. 100% of the naturopaths. Only a few of the um, of the MDs, about half the dentists, and now 30 years later, those were the happier ones, the ones that saw me <laughs> as a competitor. I, I never, I mean, there's a couple of them I never even saw smile. I've never seen them smile. And it's like, and it's like, dude, we're homies. We compete against big screen TVs and gosh darn trips to Disney World, not each other. I mean, if I'm mm-hmm. going to put my phone on an emergency, I'd rather they go to the dental office across the street because they already drive to my office, but they'll say, right. oh no, I'm going to have some guy in Tucson do it so they won't steal my customer. I mean, just relax have fun and you don't need to get on the internet to learn something when you got a periodontist across the street placing implants but you're going to go learn how to place them in the dominican republic you know how many you're going to have to fly over your periodontist <laughs> house on the way there why why are you going to the dr when jerry would teach you himself i mean so so more more going to the bars and drinking beer with the mm-hmm. dentist and by the way the mds are Big egos, but the chiropractors and the naturopaths, when you call them, they're like, really? You want to talk to me? It's like, I want Mm -hmm. you to come to my house. I want to cook you dinner. You know, you start hanging out with anybody that sees a patient in any realm. One of the ladies is a pelvic um, health therapist. 
I didn't even know, you know, I don't, I don't I didn't know. A, I didn't, I, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. I never had a baby. Um, I look pregnant, but I've never had a baby. And I guess after you had a couple of babies, your pelvic, but anyway, but she came, you know, she came by and she, you know, I don't know how many people that have pelvic problems will also one day say, by the way, do you know a good dentist? And she's like, mm-hmm. well, indeed, I do know a good dentist. In fact, I've, you know, ate dinner at his house before, you know, so mm-hmm. so just get out there and get out there and run for mayor. Get out there like you're running for the mayor of dental world in your town and shake mm-hmm. hands. Pharmacists were the biggest ones. I got every pharmacist over to my house at least once a year. And every other day, someone's saying, what's better? Would you recommend Ambisol for a toothache or a leave or which one would you do? And they pick up their cell phone and they FaceTime me or they call the office and say, <laughs> if you just go across the street, you don't even need a point. Walk in there and go tell how what you just told me and then they walk in the front door and, and they'd say do you know brad i mean brad the pharmacist <laughs> well hell yeah i know brad what what did you ask him please don't <laughs> tell me it was ambisol you know and uh <laughs> and you know so that's all pressing the flesh and now kids just want to build that community with posting on facebook or mm-hmm. you know some digital mm-hmm. thing or whatever just get out there and press the flesh, shake hands, and run for mayor of your dental town, and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that's really, really, really good advice. And I'm going to give you guys a challenge off of that. And I'm going to say, um, call somebody, email somebody, um, go talk to somebody that, that might intimidate you. And I'm going to leave it with this because honestly, Howard, for me to send out an email to ask if you want to be on the Dental 18 podcast, and I'm not trying to like fluff your ego or anything like that. It really, I was so anxious to get on this podcast to talk to you because I feel from my own state of like, no, but Howard's been in the business for so long. Like, who am I? What can I bring to this? We all have those feelings of intimidation. And the reality is you said, yes, you said yes to me. You've gone on the podcast. We have a relationship. We have a friendship. We, I feel like I could email you and say, Hey, I don't know about this, but that intimidated me. And so I'm going to, I'm going to encourage all of you to take what Howard just said, go talk to somebody, email somebody who cares if you don't get a response back. At least you tried, at least you push yourself out of your comfort zone because there's always someone that will give you, um, they're willing, most people are willing to share all you have to do is get the guts to ask. And so thank you for that, that challenge. And thank you for, for being, for saying yes to us and being on the podcast. I think you just bring so much value. So um, I really, really appreciate you being here today. It was an honor to uh, talk to you on my 30th anniversary. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. It was an honor and a privilege to be on your show. Absolutely. And congrats on the 30 years. That's, that's a huge accomplishment. All right, you guys, this has been Howard Fran on the Dental A Team. And thank you all of you for listening. And we'll catch you next time on the Dental A Team podcast.